thread life cycle is one of the popular Java interview questions asked to entry level Java developers. You have to be clear with the basics first, such as thread life cycle before advancing to the other multi-threading topics. So let's start with this. So thread is always in one of the below six states, new, runnable, logged, waiting, time waiting and terminated. One thing you need to keep in mind is that actual operating system threads does not have these states. All these states of thread are JVM specific states. Okay, so when a thread is created and its start method is not yet called, it is a new state. When you instantiate thread class and check its states, you will find it new. So if you want to, you know, get the state of your thread, you can call get state method of thread class. Uh, let me show you how. So this is my Java workspace. I have one class, my thread, which is extending thread. And uh, inside that I have a run method. So I initialized my thread and uh, now I want to check state of, of my thread. Okay, so uh, what we can do is, let's say I need to print my thread state. I can call this out. Get one method inside thread class, which is get state. Okay, so when you call this, you should be able to get its state. Right now, it's only instantiated. It's not, uh, start method is not called yet. So you should get new here. Let me run this code. Okay, you can see thread state is new. So now, let's say that, you know, I want to check after starting the thread, I, what should be the state. Okay, now first, let me call start method third. Now, let me print the state. So let's run this, you know, before doing anything. Yeah, you can see next time thread state is runnable. Okay, thread is in new then runnable because after start when you call get state, it should be runnable. So let's put some sleep here. Okay, for two seconds. By two seconds, our thread would finish its execution. So our state should come to, you know, terminated. Okay start and sleep okay let's let me run this now see so after start when you call start our run method is invoked which is printing worker thread is running okay so worker thread is running printed first new state is printed then after two seconds our thread already finished uh, our run method okay then the state would be terminated so when we call start method, the thread comes in runnable state. Even in runnable, there is no guarantee that thread will start executing immediately. It depends on CPU which allocates its time. So when a thread gets time, it comes to running state. So runnable comprises of two states, ready and running. So when a thread is in ready state, it is waiting for its turn to get CPU time. So next is blocked. A thread is in blocked state if it was trying to enter synchronized block or method. So you can say that, you know, if you have a synchronized block and uh, one met one thread T1 is already inside synchronized block, a T2 thread is waiting for T1 to finish and move out of synchronized, then T2 should be in blocked state. Okay. Thread is in waiting state if it calls wait or path method. So this path method is in log support class introduced in Java 1.5. A thread is in time waiting state when it is waiting for a specified period of time. We usually use uh, uh, sleep, wait, path until and path nanos to move a thread into a time waiting state. So when a thread completes its execution, it goes to terminated state. A thread in is terminated when it exits its run method or its stop method is called. A terminated state thread cannot transition to any other state. Uh, keep in mind. So uh, a thread is in new state and a start method is called, then thread moves to runnable state. And in runnable, we know that we have two states, ready and running based on the time slide, time allocated by the CPU. So when a thread is in ready state and CPU allocates its, allocate its time, then it moves to running state. And uh, when in running state, a thread uh, uh, called yield method, then it can move to ready state. Okay, 
uh, yield method tells the JVM that it is ready to give up its time slice for some other priority thread. Okay, and uh, from runnable, a thread can move to blocked state uh, when it is waiting for a to lock. And once a lock is acquired, then it can move back to runnable. Then uh, from runnable again, uh, it can come to waiting whenever we call wait and join method. And uh, once notify or notify all is called, then uh, it moves again to runnable. Now, next is time waiting. So a thread can move to time waiting uh, by calling sleep, wait, park until. And uh, when the time interval finishes, then it can move again to runnable state. So uh, from runnable again, it can come to block and block to runnable. You know, this cycle can continue. But when thread finishes uh, its execution, once run is uh, completed, then it can move to terminate, terminated state. And from terminated, it, it cannot come back to any other state. Yeah, this is it uh, from uh, thread lifecycle. Uh, stay tuned for more videos to subscribe. Bye-bye.